Put Gemini in the Sun, Moon, or Ascendant position in your character if you want them to come off as inquisitive, fun-loving, and never boring. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk all about Gemini characters. It's Gemini season, and of course, as always, if you haven't, I'm going to link my original, like, intro astrology video up in the card that's going to give you context for all the things we're going to talk about today, which is all things Gemini. So don't forget, let me know about your Gemini characters in the comments down below. Gemini is represented by the twins. It's part of the air element, and its quality is mutable. Air signs are typically seen as independent and knowledgeable, and mutable signs are typically seen as welcoming change because they come at the end of the season while we're preparing for the next. And Gemini falls at the end of spring. The sun is typically in Gemini from May 21st to June 20th. Think of Gemini as embodying the dual nature of the twins. One moment they'll be ready for fun, and the next moment they'll be intensely thoughtful. With spring ending, Gemini often feels like their time is running out. Their curiosity is boundless, and one lifetime just isn't enough to put in all of the knowledge they want to acquire and all of the experiences they want to have. Gemini's ruling planet is Mercury, and Mercury represents your communication style, how you speak, and how you problem solve. So Gemini possess the gift of gab. Gemini make excellent journalists, writers, and researchers. The key word for Gemini is curious. Put Gemini in the Sun, Moon, or Ascendant position in your character if you want them to come off as inquisitive, fun-loving, and never boring. Remember, what sign the Sun is in at the time of someone's birth represents their sense of self, what drives them, and their core instincts. But of course, any planet can be in any sign, so let's take some time to cover all of them. And just like we've done in previous videos, I'm going to be putting example characters in the corner of the screen that I think are a good representation of that particular placement of that planet in Gemini, so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. For Gemini rising, all the world is a library. Remember, your rising sign is what you project out onto the world, so take the things that we talked about and apply them to that. Gemini rising people are forever and always gaining new knowledge and skills. They love to ask questions, mingle, and move freely throughout their lives. You can't pin down someone with a Gemini Ascendant. Sometimes even, they're so concerned with staying mentally agile that they can neglect their interpersonal relationships. Once they feel they've learned all they can from and about a person, sometimes they just move on to new people. The moon in Gemini shows someone who is pleasant, witty, and charming. Their curious nature often means they have a finger in every single pie. They can't stand not knowing the deepest secrets and desires of everyone around them, and they'll take any opportunity to dig for that information. So what they'll do is tend to pay attention closely to everyone around them so that they can ascertain that information from the people that are less willing to share it. Since the moon is someone's inner world, the moon in Gemini can sometimes take that curiosity and turn it into anxiety. The need to understand their emotions and the emotions of others can put a lot of weight on the Gemini moon's shoulders. They might end up taking on too many fixer-upper projects in themselves and in others in their constant quest for knowledge and improvement. Let's next go into the personal planets. Of course, you're going to see a lot of the same things here, just applied to the different realms of those personal planets. Mercury in Gemini colors someone's communication style as curious. Since Gemini are all about learning, they are seen as quick-witted. However, because they have that quest for knowledge, sometimes they can become a jack-of-all-trades and a master of none. They'll know about a lot of things and have lots of eclectic interests, but not be particularly good at any one thing. Since Mercury is Gemini's ruling planet, the sign really shines in this placement. Expect to never be bored hanging out with someone whose Mercury is in Gemini. They will not only know how to have the most fun, but they are invaluable on any research team, all the way from pub trivia up to being masters in their field, provided that they have other signs to balance them out and keep them focused. If you're struggling to make a decision, ask a Mercury and Gemini person. They know exactly what they'd do in that situation. Venus and Gemini color someone's love and desires as curious. People with this placement appreciate quick banter, intellectual rigor, and showing all of their diverse interests to someone to attract the object of their affection. 
Typically, they don't want to be tied down to any one person and would prefer to play the field. There is simply too much to learn about all of the wonderful people in the world, so the idea of just learning a lot about one person is boring to them. This can be expressed in lots of different ways depending on other placements in their chart. They might constantly cheat, or they might be a serial monogamist, or they might be polyamorous, depending on the situation. But above all, Venus in Gemini needs constant variety in their love life. Mars in Gemini colors someone's ambitions as curious. They need to have lots of different projects going all at once to feel energized. When there's nothing to do, they'll quickly grow bored and lose all of that ambitious energy. That means this placement is great for starting projects, but follow through can sometimes be difficult. When this placement is angry, they often use words to make their point, which means they're really adept at saying hurtful things if you criticize their method or get in their way. This placement does best when they use that angry or nervous energy and channel it into their hands and use it as a drive to finish those projects that they like to start. Jupiter in Gemini attracts good fortune when they use their wit and curiosity. When they are sincere in their friendships and their curiosity, they're able to use those skills to bring good fortune to themselves and those around them. They believe completely that the best way to solve problems is through using knowledge and intelligence. Saturn in Gemini shows Gemini in what they fear. They might feel uncomfortable when expressing their lighthearted or superficial or enthusiastic side. They may even go so far as to feel suspicious of others who are more superficial. Gemini's curious nature here means that they are more comfortable in deep conversations than anywhere else. And those are our personal planets, so now we're going to move on to our outer planets. And remember, for those, we're talking about more generational than individual. Uranus in Gemini is a time of fresh, new ideas. Wealth of knowledge from Gemini means tons of innovation in all sorts of technology areas. And that curiosity means it's a great time to refocus on the value of learning from each other and utilizing teamwork in that way. The last time Uranus was in Gemini was from August 1941 to June 1949. Neptune in Gemini dreams of new knowledge. This is a time for the mentally gifted, improvements in communication, and all sorts of academic new learnings, both traditional and alternative. During this time, interest in academia and the occult are both on the rise. The last time Neptune was in Gemini was from 1882 to 1941. Pluto in Gemini signifies a time of great optimism and curiosity. Changes come all at once during this time, and that optimism means that nothing is too outlandish or too taboo to try. This unrestrained optimism can sometimes obfuscate the cracks that are forming in society, and it's a precursor often to a great downfall that's coming. The last time Pluto was in Gemini was from 1883 to 1913. So that's how all of the planets react when they're in Gemini. Just like always, I barely touched on this. So if any of this interests you, I recommend further reading down below. I've linked all of my favorite astrology websites. So do any of you have Gemini characters? If you do, I would love to hear about them. If you don't, are you considering creating a Gemini character now hearing more about the sign? Let me know about all of that down below. And don't forget, as always, to make it a great day.